Clap, clap, clap. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to start out, actually, um, I remember I told you yesterday I was going to hold off in um, going over our problem of the week, because I really wanted to take some time to showcase some really awesome work that I happened to see yesterday. So we're going to start there. Um, the problem of the week yesterday, the standard was all about problem solving, but more specifically, it was about two-step word problems with multiple operations. So you notice it wasn't the same thing. It wasn't add and add or subtract and subtract. It was multiply and subtract or adding. Yes. Yes. So some people did some different strategies, and I want to show that. thing about it is we had 62%, so I said we could do much better. And what I noticed is that we made some little minor mistakes in not really reading the question carefully. Okay, um, so that costs us big points in terms of you can't get all your points if you just get half of the question correct. I mean, it's smaller. So here's what, here was your question. It was Mike runs two miles a day. His goal is to run a total of 25 miles after six days. How many miles does Mike have left to run in order to meet his goal? Okay, what were some key words that you saw in this? Right, his goal is to do 25 total miles. What's another key word you got, Mackenzie? How many? How many? What's another one, Jalen? Uh, each. Do we have each? Have less. Have less, like that was huge. Because that was our last step, right? Our last step, right, with the question was that have left. In my mind, when I saw that, I thought subtraction because that's the key word that we relate to subtraction a lot. It's even up there. So it's like, that's something that I thought of. So I want to show you my model first. And then I know a lot of you noticed that I put this up. Instead of taking down our last problem of the week, I just put this week's problem of the week on the board because I had some empty space. So this is what I have up there, and you can see that later, but I took pictures of it so you can see it um, bigger. So when I read this question, this is what I was thinking. This is my thinking. I went with the model first. I drew a model first, and I did six days, because I noticed that there were six days that he did this, and he did two miles on each day, so I put two in each. And then I realized that that looks like six times two, right, as my multiplication yes. strategy. So I realized he's so far done 12 miles. But I can't stop there because our question was asking us how many miles does he have left to meet that goal of 25. Okay? So if you have the whole of 25 and you have this part that you know, what's left is the difference. All right. And so that's what I did over here. I did 25 as my whole minus the part that I know, and it was equal to my difference of 13. Okay? So I said Mike has to run 13 more miles to meet his goal. I know this because, notice that I just simply answered the question first, period. Nice, sweet, and to the point. Then I went into what I did, okay? Some of you, I noticed you did this first, and then somewhere down the line, you told me that it equaled 13. That's not good enough. It's good that you got the 13, but we need to clearly answer the question. Remember, Ms. Reed's not reading your work in the long run. Somebody else has to read and understand your work. They won't say, oh, he kind of got it. I see he got the 13 on here somewhere. They're going to say, did he answer the question about how many more miles did Mike need to run? If you don't do that here, and eh, they're, they're deducting points. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then I said, I know it's because I first multiplied 6 times 2 and equals 12. So he has to run 12 miles. He has run 12 miles in 6 days. I subtracted 12 from 25 to show how many miles he still has to run. That's what I did. So let's see what some of you Brilliant little children did. So let's check out some masters. Now I'm only going to go over the bottom. And you saw Ms. Richardson came in. She still wants to give you guys something. So later on, those students that are up on that master's board, you will get what she dropped off for you. Okay? So I said this. Mackenzie's model looks a lot like mine. Does everything Ms. Reed do, is that the only way to do things and the only way to get an answer right? No. no. It just so happens that she was thinking in a way that I was thinking as well in terms of a model, multiplication, then subtraction. Listen to her response. Mike needs to run 13 more miles because he runs two miles every day, and two, mi two miles every day for six days equals 12 miles. 
and 25 minus 12 equals 13 more miles he needs to run. See how the question was answered right away? Yes. Yeah. There he is. Also, real similar. Model, multiplication, subtraction, okay? Michael have to run 13 more miles, would have 13 more miles to go. I say this because I multiply six times two, 12, and then I subtract the 25 minus 12, it's 13. Short, sweet, to the point. Okay, this is what I wanted to showcase. Like I said, the one way Ms. Reed thought, that's definitely not even the one, only one way that I taught you. So, I said, wonderful way to use the counting on strategy to find the missing part. Listen to what she did. Mike needs to run 13 more miles to reach his goal. I know the answer because I multiplied 2 times 6 equals 12, then counted until I got 13. So she figured this out, realized she needed to get to 25, counted on until she got to 25, realized that 13 was her missing part. A little different. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with you using addition if you still match the goal that you're trying to reach. Another one. Great job, London. Jasmine, same thing. Also used the counting on strategy and did addition to solve. The amount of miles Mike needs to run to make his goal is 13 because first you need to multiply 6 times 2 equals 12 and add 12 plus 13 equals 25, which is 13 as your answer. Sorry, I chopped off the answer. Same, counting on strategy. So we had two people that had like minds in this. Jalen, another one that was going back to the multiplication and subtraction. Great job. The answer is 13 more miles. Told me the answer right away. He needs to reach his goal. How I, I got my answer is I multiply 6 times 12 is 12 and then subtract 25 minus 12 is 13. Perfect. That's what I need to see. All right, so like I said, 62% is what something that I need to see improve, and I want to see that improve right now. I need you to take out your fraction board, turn it over to the blank side, take out your marker. Five, four, three, London's ready. a day his goal is to collect a total of 30 coins after four days how many coins does Sid have left to collect in order to meet his goal <laughs> this problem is very similar on the back side of your fraction board the back side of your fraction board I want you to solve I'm seeing models. Work quick, work quick. Valentine, since you explain very quickly, why don't you stand up really quickly, show us what you did, explain your pro thought process. I want markers down, I want all attention on the speaker. First, I put four groups for the four days, then I put... I said stand up. Oh. And show your model, show your, show your work. Okay, go ahead. First, I put four groups for the four days, then I put five, four to five points that he collects each day. Then he said, how many more does he need? So I subtracted 30 minus 20, that gives me 10. Fantastic. You see, two steps very similar to our problem of the week, and I saw a lot of the same thing happening. Quickly clear this board. Just clear it. Just clear it. Oh, not clear it. I'll give you a. I need to One per. Just one per table. It'll stay wet. Okay, so this is what um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is that you know we just did our chapter eight. Um, test on like naming parts 
of a whole, the fraction parts, naming fraction parts. We just did that, right? So I want to talk to you about how that went and what I noticed about that. So this is what I noticed. Questions like this, and this is what we talked about. Questions like this was what I saw gave us a little bit of trouble. Okay? So all eyes up here. Someone read this one for me. Darius? Yeah, the top. Caleb took 24 photos at the Zeus. One eighth of the photos are of giraffes. How many photos are of giraffes? So this is one that gave us a lot of issues. A problem like this. I kind of switched it up just a little bit. So what information do we have here based on our fractions? What information do we have here? London? We have that he took 24 pictures at this photo at the scene. Mm -hmm. And one eighth of them are giraffes. Okay, so that's important information that we need in order to figure this out, right? Yep. Yes. 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 Okay, so we have 24 and then one eighth of them are giraffes. How can I solve this? Walk me through it. How can I solve this? Kevion, what do you think? I think you can solve it by adding, I mean, taking the number of fractions Okay, so you're saying I should skip count. Yeah. One A are the giraffes. And there are 24 total pictures. Do you remember these steps that we have to go through in order to figure out one fractional part of a whole is? Because we just want to know how much one eighth is. Which information can I pull that from to start maybe drawing a model? Remember, you always easily draw a model first. What can I pull from? What information? One eighth. So what of one eighth? What part of one eighth can we start with? The eighth. The eighth. Class, what is this called? The eighth right here. In a fraction, what is this called? The denominator, right? So we use that denominator to build our model, right? So if I do that, and I start out, because we know fraction has to have equal groups. equal groups. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay? What can I do next? Valentine? Make a right. Making a right. Keep going. Keep going. Tell me more. Tell me more. You could add eight rows. I did that. Oh. Yeah. I keep putting eight until we get to 24. Okay, so should I keep putting eight until I get to 24? Because I cannot go over 24. Why can't I go over 24, <coughs> Caleb? <coughs> right, that's how many tips she took in off. So now that we have this array, how can we answer this question? How many photos are of giraffes? Mayana? You can draw a circle of giraffes. You can draw circles by rows. Okay, and if I did that, what am I doing? You're drawing eight groups of three. No. Okay. What are these called? What do we call these in terms of fractions? Each one of these groups is what? One eighth. One eighth. Fantastic. So here we go. So what, what's the answer to this question of how many giraffe pictures there are? Three. Three. Okay. So listen to this. Okay. So don't worry. Don't worry about wiping off your board. Don't worry about wiping off your board. Put the uh, paper, the paper towel in the middle. Put them in the middle. Okay. This one. We're, we're going to do this one this afternoon because this is another review one that I wanted to go over that we struggle with on the chapter test. What I want to do, we're going to start chapter 9, and before we really start chapter 9, I want to quick go over our objective. Someone read our objective for math. Mackenzie, since you super close. Our objective is to find the fractions of giraffes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, comparison, sorry. Comparison. Using the strategy makes it easier to solve the problem. Everyone in here just made a model for a fraction, correct? Yes. yes. Super easy. And when we talked about naming fractions early on, we learned how to do the circle model, where we do circles like the pizzas. Yes. We did the bar models. And we even created, like you all have here, our own fraction strips that break down what each fraction of a whole looks like, correct? Yes. So how easy do you think it's gonna be to just compare two fractions? Yes. What are we doing when we compare in math? What are we doing when we, when we compare in math? What does that mean to compare in math? Jalen, what do you think? Um, it's, to compare in math, it's greatest to least, so 